fan of anyone who has gone through the gauntlet <laughs> as a professional dancer. Uh, <laughs> um, and I've watched all your videos. I, I love what you're doing. But my real question is, do your neighbors hate you? <laughs> <Because> I, <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, it, it's, it's been interesting. It's been a learning experience. So, um, <laughs> my husband and I bought an apartment in the same building that we have an apartment right before the pandemic, uh, hit and, you know, we're like, great. So now we have two apartments and we need to sell one. But the plus side was that I had an empty living room to teach and dance and train. And um, yeah, it, it, it was interesting figuring out the sound situation. <laughs> um, I've transitioned, you know, to sharing music through the computer and everything. Um, the 80th street, we share like the buildings, the gardens between the buildings. The 80th street building um, group was like, who's the fitness instructor that's somewhere but they were they see was you like, in the window you're just like <laughs> yeah, like just like dancing it out you know um but uh they they were so awesome they were like actually you kind of, you made us like get up and move a little bit because we were, you were so enthusiastic with your sound but then i figured out with keeping the windows closed keeping everything worked out but um it took it was a it was a bit of a situation to figure out at first in the beginning of the pandemic. But, but it's um, good. You're inspiring people. So they saw you through the window and they were literally yeah. inspired to get in shape. So you're you're doing something right. But yeah, I, know, I know how people in New York are crazy. I mean, I lived in New York for 10 years. And if you yeah. walk too loud or you don't have enough carpet oh on your floor, like there's so many restrictions. So I'm like, how the fuck is she tap dancing? <laughs> no, I know. Luckily, there's no one underneath where uh, I tap dance. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so it's good. Yeah. So, so what did you, was that your first style of dance? Because I know that you have a, a strong affinity. I fucking suck at tap. I'm the I'm <laughs> legit. I started classically trained ballet and I, uh -huh. I, had, I had zero aptitude. I had incredible rhythm, zero aptitude for tap. And I think that I just <laughs> was like, yeah, I don't need this. I don't need tap. I'm not going to do Broadway anyways. I'm going <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm like, I have like so much respect for you. I, I grew up doing jazz tap and ballet, um, but uh, tap's always just been my favorite. Um, I'm trained in all different forms of dance, but I just love pounding my feet. <laughs> were you were you is that what you were like when you were a kid were you like did you have lots of tantrums at your parents <laughs> and they're like I mean, that's, a, that's a good question i guess i just put my tap shoes on and took it out on the on the driveway so <laughs> I, think, my I, feel house. Like I have a two and a half year old and i'm like maybe i should put tap oh. shoes on and it'll inspire him to like do something positive with his tantrums like we had like a full meltdown we were at um oh. at a grocery store yesterday and i don't i'm gonna i'm gonna curse out vons right now because i don't know why they have so many <laughs> balloons in their grocery mm. stores and of course he's like balloon balloon and it was like close to you know dinner time and he had a full on the ground I, we haven't had this one yet full on the ground yeah. meltdown kicking and screaming so maybe tap shoes oh are the my answer gosh maybe tap shoes yeah i mean i did teach i did you i i'm from ohio and before i came to new york Midwest. i did teach a lot of yeah i did uh, teach a lot of two three four year olds tap dancing and they love to bang their feet so <laughs> maybe, well, maybe that's, it would be good i'm definitely i mean i know that i'm, I'm sure you, you probably feel the same way that just having that body awareness um mm -hmm. being a dancer just being in your own like really being comfortable in your skin for me i also played mm -hmm. sports so it helped me in so many different avenues um and it just yeah. made me more aware in so many ways and if it's it's funny when i see people who aren't as connected to their body. And I'm like, Oh, I, I guess we're just super fortunate to have done that. So I'm putting him in dance and gymnastics, yeah. like straight oh, away. Good. Yeah. yeah, yeah no, cool. just, yeah. Just to have that awareness. I mean, it, that's why, um, you know, professional athletes go and take ballet or tap, you know, for coordination. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you that know? Was the, and during, agility. When I was growing up, that was, it was funny. That was the way I kind of justified it. Everyone's like, Oh, you're doing dance. That's so gay. That's so this. And I'm like, football players are doing dance and like, and that was actually yeah. the time when everyone started doing it. And then now it's like, you know, everybody's doing it. So everybody's doing it. Um, how, Good. how hard was it to become a rocket? It's, I mean, it's hard. Uh, the audition is hard in itself. And then the rehearsal process is like a whole other level. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask you, I'm, how is, how is auditioning? So something I never did. How is auditioning oh, yeah. in New York? In Broadway? New York, 
Yeah. Um, so auditioning in New York, specifically Rockettes, it's always an open call. Mm -hmm. And there's like 500 women that line the street around Radio City Music Hall waiting to be seen. Um, so, you know, you stand in line, you get in line in the morning. It's a 10 a.m. audition. You get in line maybe at 7 uh, and wait. And they take groups of 40 to 50 girls at a time. And then um, you learn a combination pretty fast. Mm -hmm. And then you do it in groups of three to five. And then they make a cut. And then there's so many girls that they have to see after you that they're like, okay, come back in four hours for the next round. So then you like, you know, you stay warm, you stay in it, and then you come back and um, maybe there's a group of 80 girls left. And then they make another cut after you learn another dance combination. And then if you're there at the end of the day, they're like, come back tomorrow. So then you come back the next day and then you learn more and then they make another cut and then they say, we will call you. So um, that's like specifically the Rockhead audition. It's similar, it's similar to Broadway, um, but you do have um, the singing and acting part involved as well, even if you're, um, a dancer mm -hmm. in for the ensemble in a Broadway show, uh, you'll always have to sing. Uh, so that's this is kind of a similar audition process where you go to the audition and learn a dance combination fast and then dance with three to five people in the group and they make a cut and maybe you get cut, maybe you'll say, dance some more, dance some more, dance some more, just as long as the audition tends to go. And I've been in an audition from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. the whole insane. day long for one show. And um, then they have either sent you material to prepare for the audition, whether it's um, some sides uh, for scenes or um, songs they've had you learn, which is crazy because sometimes you learn the song, but you get cut, so you never do it. No. <laughs> So, you know, it's kind of like, well, I guess it's a musical theater class for free, I guess. But um, yeah. And then usually at the end of a dance call for a Broadway show, um, if you're still there, you sing either a song they gave you to learn or one of your own songs. And then they say, we'll call you. <laughs> so how many times was it like you auditioned once and you made it or was it a multiple time effort? Like how did that, what was that process? And what time of year is this that you're, they're making you wait out? It's not like in the middle of winter when they're making you wait outside for four. No, okay. thank goodness. <laughs> no, there's, there's two Rockhead auditions and it's in the spring and in August usually. So Perfect. end of summer in spring. Yeah. So not so bad, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, it, when I, I have like a crazy random story for the first show I ever got that I got right away, um, that I'll tell you, but in my career, definitely lots of no's and not getting <laughs> shows. But, um, but when I, I am from Ohio and my whole life, I wanted to be a rocket, a radio city rocket. Uh, I was tall enough, so that was the first hurdle to get over. Um, and so my senior year of high school, I was 17, was the springtime. Wait, what's the height? Sorry, not to cut you off. What's the height requirement? Because there's probably girls that turn up yeah. at the audition that you're like, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like... Yeah, there are. And, you know, they me they do measure you. So um, it's five six to five ten and a half. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the tallest rockets are in the center of the line and the shortest are on the end. Yeah. Gives the illusion. Um, and, but I came to New York when I was 17 with two of my friends, they weren't dancers to audition for the Rockettes. And, um, we got here to New York and the first thing we wanted to do was see a Broadway show. So we went and got tickets, probably at TKTS or, you know, the, yeah some ticket center and we went to see the revival of 42nd street which was on broadway at the time and after we saw the show i grew up coming to new york for dance masters of america same. dance competitions i was, I was uh, mr dance mr dance in michigan uh, multiple times oh so. nice nice i was still pissed i got wait hold on here's here's my grievance with tappers also I was second yeah. runner up in nationals. This is many years yeah. ago. I think I'm probably a little yeah. older than you. Um, and I got beat by a fucking tapper who just did like oh. a million pirouettes and tap shoes. And I was like, anybody can do that. 
no, it's hard. You know, I'm actually surprised that you got beat by like a, 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 a politics. Because it's politics. Politics. <laughs> oh, isn't it? Isn't it always politics a lot of the time? You know, but um, but yeah, no. I mean, it's hard to compare. You know what I mean? Like it's it's so different. But um, oh, dance competition. But life. yeah, dance masters. Yeah, I know dance comp. That's why I grew up on that. So. I had like been to New York before. Um, so I w have seen some Broadway shows and we always stood outside the stage door to get autographs on our playbills, you know, sure. plan play those cast members. So after we saw the show, I told my girlfriend that we have to go to the stage door. We have to get autographs on our playbills. And so we stood outside the stage door and there's always a stage door guard at a Broadway theater and friends talking amongst themselves that I was a dancer here auditioning I don't even know but she handed me her invitation to a year anniversary party of the show that evening and it was at the rainbow room um, at Rockefeller Center NBC building and I went by myself to this party and didn't know anyone got in the food line because it was something to do and um, then I ended up go like being like, where do I go now? But so I walked up to one of the leads of the show and was like, hi, I'm Beth. Do you remember me from the stage door this afternoon? <laughs> Probably not, but um, <laughs> but uh, the, the lead, the woman at the time, um, she was so nice, took me under her wing, introduced me to the director and the choreographer who was Randy Skinner and Mark Bramble was the director and he just told me, you'll have to send me your headshot and resume. And I literally whipped it out of my purse and handed <laughs> it to him right there. I mean, never would I do that now, but a 17 year old from Ohio that didn't know better. Okay. Although no better. Somehow I knew to put my headshot and resume in my bag. I don't know. But um, anyways, the choreographer invited me to audition for the show a few days later. It was a male dance call. And at the end of the day, it was me and 12 guys doing a hat and cane dance. And um, then I got called back and then I got cast in the national tour That's of amazing. the revival of 42nd Street. So after high school, I it was literally just like, blah, 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 you know, um, so for my first audition experience, it doesn't usually go like that. But I got a national tour of a show, which I toured the U.S. with for two years. And then, um, then came back here to New York. I love that. It's funny. I had a, I had a, I always tell people too, cause I had a very charmed kind of audition. I, I booked the first thing that I went out for. And I was like, this is easy. <laughs> and then you don't realize how many no's you're going to get after that. Right. Um, right. But, uh, you have that just fantasy in your head that, oh, this is, <laughs> I've worked, yeah. obviously I've worked really hard for this. I'm going to get booked all the time. Um, yeah. but it is funny how ballsy you get to be. Um, as a dancer and, and just mm -hmm. someone who's and especially we came up in the same competition circuit where you were you had to be you had to be really on you had to just be kind of aggressive um, yeah and I feel like I wish more people got to experience that process um, it, it, sets yeah. you, it sets you up for you know the ups and the downs and it would mm -hmm. you know for going into any job or just meeting people situation I love that you had your headshot in your resume <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> Do people even have headshots anymore? Is that a thing? It is a thing. Oh, it is really? a thing. Yeah, um, it is still a thing. Um, maybe it won't be after this pandemic. Maybe it'll all just be digital or, you know, you send um, in. But, God, that'd be terrible yeah. to do a self-tape for a Zoom dance thing. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Uh, so you're, you obviously uh, had incredible success uh, on Broadway and, uh, and as a Rockette. Mm -hmm. And now... Obviously, the whole thing has been turned up upside down. It's on its head, and a yeah. lot of people are out of work. You were out of work. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. What did you always have the entrepreneur mindset? Was it something that you always wanted to create the limit, or where did that inspiration come from? No, I I never had the entrepreneur uh, mindset at all. I never planned on creating a company. I've been a trainer for almost a decade. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'd always, I've always done a show and then I've trained in the morning in the afternoon and um, the pandemic hit. And, you know, I had just gotten back from LA working on the Netflix film, The Prom. I was on the choreography team for that film and uh working with, you know, it, Nicole, Nicole Kidman. Let's uh, do a little name drop right there. Casual. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Casual. Yes, yes, I was. I helped a, 
a lot with her Fosse in that show. Um, I just finished doing Chicago on Broadway right before I did the film. And the pandemic, it was starting to stir up a bit, you know, with people getting it and what's happening um, as I was flying back to New York, where, you know, you finish a, a job and always my whole life, you finish a show, you finish a job, whatever. And you're like, what's next? What's next? I'm <laughs> I'm un- like, now I'm oh. unemployed. <laughs> and now yeah. I'm unemployed. What's next? You yeah. know, um, and the pandemic hit and I just had uh, people reaching out nonstop to do virtual private sessions. I think everyone just was at home and needed a routine, needed to work out, mm-hmm. you know, needed connection. Um, and so I just started training people virtually from the living room of this new apartment <laughs> and, um, and it surprisingly works out really well. I mean, there's a whole figuring out process with um, Zoom and your FaceTime. Na- your na- your like, neighbors. My <laughs> neighbors. The building. Yeah, just yeah. like uh, the building, just figuring it out. And um, and then it just kind of started to coast. I, had, I just had so many people reaching out and um, my schedule was starting to just build and build and build. And uh then it, my birthday was April 26th and I just love dance cardio. I just think it's so fun. And, um, you know, you can be a dancer to do it. You don't have to be a dancer to do it. It's just good cardio. It's always helped me with my stamina, especially singing and dancing at the same time in a Broadway show. And, um, and I just was like, I want to have a big dance party on my birthday. And I just shared the zoom link and, um, and, and, like over a hundred people showed up and we just, I made up all these dances and we just danced it out. And then people were like, aren't you, are you going to teach more? Are you going to have more classes? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I think I have to start a business. I get, you know, like I just, I, I was so like, okay, the, I guess the, I'm going to do this. The you accidental know? entrepreneur. <laughs> You're like, well, yeah, yeah. all of a sudden, yeah, I'm an entrepreneur, but, um, but I love it. I feel like, being an entrepreneur, it, it feels like being, um, a hustling dancer, professional dancer. You know what I mean? It, that's, I feel at very much at home, you know, working my butt off every day. It feels like I'm like constantly like auditioning and taking class. Da, 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 and I, I feel like I'm doing that in a different way. Um, but yeah, so I started this business and, um, and it's just, taken off in a great way and created this awesome community like a worldwide community which is so that's the amazing thing right you like obviously when you're training people one-on-one you're you're having a really connected experience with that one person but to be able to have people in the middle of nowhere be connecting with you that's like a whole nother level that you probably obviously never even thought about yeah i never even thought about it because this is you know this isn't a fitness company that existed um, in person before. Mm -hmm. It's a completely virtual company and um, that's new. And I mean, it's amazing. I I have like regulars in my classes. My Thursday morning class is the best because I see the little video that people are already in the class before me. And I know that it is Aisha from Pakistan, Maria from Mexico, and Shannon in California talking before class starts. And I'm like, this is, I mean, it's just so, I mean, all over the world. And, um, and even on the website, the limit with the analytics, literally every, like, Every country has visited the limit online except Antarctica, which I'll take. That's like, we're gonna we're, we're know, gonna work on them. There's not a lot of dancers yeah. in Antarctica. Yeah, we'll work on Antarctica. <laughs> but it's so I mean, it's so fascinating and so cool and and even like the the limit, I mean you would you'll completely understand how I got the name and how I think of the workout. Um, I was trying to think of a name in my entire life, your life as well, I'm sure. <laughs> as a dancer, a professional dancer and in a show, you've been asked to do things that you never thought you were capable of or possible, like that you could do. And I and you just do one, you know what I mean? And then you're like, oh my gosh, I can do that eight shows a week. Or I can do, you know, like I can do this move in, the, in a dance. And like, I never thought I could do that. Obviously you work towards it. And I wanted the workout to be like that. 
I wanted to make it hard enough attainable, you know, as a trainer, you want to make something attainable, but hard enough that pushes people to want to do something they are fearful of or never thought they were capable of. And eventually they can do it. And that confidence built mentally and physically in someone is priceless, especially during this time when I can like make people do things that they're like, what, you know, and like, and, and, and they get over fears and they go for it and they, and they, they get out anger, they get out frustration and then they're stronger from it during this time. It's like a standstill time in a way. And they're moving forward with themselves individually. And it's, it's everything. So, um, so yeah, it was like the limit. It's like, what is your limit wherever it is? find it and push past it. And that's your new limit. You know, yeah, that's gonna, the whole like mindset as gonna, like a dancer. You I know what I mean? Like, I, I love that. I was just going to say, and obviously your limit increases with how much you're going to show up, how much work you put in. And everyone obviously has their different limit. And that's all you can mm -hmm. ask of anyone, right? Just, just right. execute to your potential and like, don't, yeah. don't try to go too crazy, but like know where your limit is and like, but you know, maybe bump, bump, yeah. bump it up a little bit. A little bit more. Just bump it yeah. up a little bit more. A little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I think a lot of people don't realize that they are capable of pushing a little bit more. And when they realize that, they want to push even more. <laughs> well, that's, <laughs> that's why good. It's, it's good that you can, uh, you can lead them into that space uh, in, a, in a safe way. So what differentiates this training mode versus, I mean, obviously, everybody's gone to online. I know that you said yeah. you started, you launched it online. So it, it was different mm -hmm. than most people who were brick and mortar and then said, oh, oh shit, we need to pivot. Um, yeah. How has that made you different than the other brands? Oh, different than the other brands. I mean, I think overall, um, I'm I'm a little bit harder. It's a little bit more hardcore. I think of of other brands because I've I've worked for another brand before. I've taken a lot of other brands, and um, I think I'm I'm not I'm not a yes trainer. So <laughs> you know. I think that like, it, it's not for everyone. It is for everyone training wise, but it's not for everyone on like the level that I require from people. I have a high standard, standard for myself. And so I have a high standard for anyone that comes and takes the class, but <laughs> you sound like you me. Are. It's hilarious. You sound like me. I, you're preaching <laughs> to the choir right now. I think it's a dancer thing where you just have this insane, yeah. cause your work ethic is so high and you're like, you see somebody and you're like, come on, you can do better. You, you yeah, have I know. more. And you have more than that you want. And it's also hard to go from just being a dancer to actually mm -hmm. teaching and running a group, yeah. a group scenario. There's a whole art to, to that as well. So I, I'm yeah, totally no, ready. totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, like it's what I love is, uh, I mean, I have a team of trainers and they're all professional dancers out of work um, that are all also trainers. And it's cool to like create a company with that as well. And everyone is certified through national, uh, nationally accredited organizations as trainers. Um, so the, the workout is straightforward, functional. It's not, um, it's not uh, creating um, anything crazy. It's functional training, like for your kinetic chain in our body. So, um, you know, I mean, I think that's what just kind of makes it stand out a bit. I I had a client recently. I mean, the limit, the limit community, whatever level you're at, everyone's at different levels, but the mindset is a perseverance and grit mindset. So you're taking class with a lot of people that push and you can even, and I'm surprised, like you can even feel it on Zoom, you know, like it's, it's really surprising. And I had someone recently in class describe it pretty well. Um, if I would describe the limit, um, they said, my sport is the limit. And I think that describes it pretty well. It's not just like um, an adequate workout or get your workout in. It's, it's kind of a sport. It's like how well you perform that class type of thing. And it's not a bad thing too, if you're not performing at your best, but it is, I was like, it is, it is a sport. Um, a lot of athletes um, take the class. A lot of athletes come from the class. Like I'm a marathon runner. I would have never been able to run the marathon if I didn't create this workout. And I wasn't expecting that actually. I just 
created a workout that was functional and I knew was full body and would push you. And it made me a fast freaking runner. And I wasn't expecting that. Um, and I was like, Oh, that's good. You know, like, I'm like, that's good. This is great. Cause I, you know, I love to run. So that's amazing about people's potential though. I think that, and it's something that I would always say to people, like, even if you don't feel a hundred percent, give me a hundred percent of whatever you've got. <laughs> like just absolutely, everyone's yeah. at a different place on every day you wake up, you're, you're this, you're that, you might be sore, you might be tired, but just give me mm -hmm. like, give me all of what you have to show up with today. And, and like, that's yeah. all you can really ask of people. So can everybody see each other or you can see everybody I'm sure. Right. Uh, yeah, I can see everyone and everyone can see each other. Okay. Now, some people, yeah, uh, yeah. So now some people keep their videos off though, which is totally fine. You always come to class and like, half the videos are off and half the videos are on. I know, <laughs> yeah. Or I'm like, no. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, I'm right there. The They're just like, <laughs> just breathing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that set was, this set was super hard. <laughs> I know you can't see like half the Ooh, body. Beth, I'm tired. <laughs> I know that is the funny thing about Zoom too. I'm like, I really? think I think their lower body is moving. I don't know, <laughs> you know, but um, but yeah, it's your choice. Your choice to have your video on or off for people to see. But um, it's pretty cool though. Or people work up. I get messages from people saying, you know, it's been two weeks. I, I think I might be able to turn my video on now, you oh, know, awesome. like it's, that's like a stepping stone, like a, a growth, a moving forward. But, um, but yeah, you can see everyone. No. And we also, we, I have on demand too, which you can do on your own. Nice. No one sees you on your own time, anytime. Um, so that's also an option. So us. walk everyone. me through a, a gamut of, of the classes that you offer and what, what yeah. to expect from each one of those different classes. Yeah, so there's a dance cardio class. Um, there's uh, three classes actually, dance cardio. It's an hour long class. You warm up, you learn six dances, oh, and then wow. you do them all together. Yeah, um, so basically you warm up, you learn the dance to a song, and then another song, you do the dance, then plyo hit, do the dance, plyo hit, do the dance, plyo hit, learn another dance, then do it again, that dance, dance plyo. So you're doing the dance and then you're doing like eight or 16 burpees and then the dance again. Sounds like a rock yeah. out audition. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, pretty much. I was like, you know, every day before the shows at Rockettes, I would do like a burpee hit situation just to get my body awake and moving. Um, so you do those six dances and then you do them all together uh, at the end and kind of like the mashup uh, with plyo and hit and all kinds of stuff. And then you stretch. So it's like cardio. If you love cardio, it's high level of cardio and dancing. Yeah, but, I'll, be, um, I'll be video off in that one. Just see. So yeah. <laughs> that's all right. There's a lot of video off in that one. It's I was so going to, I was going to say, I bet you that's the most video off one that you offer. <laughs> and it's totally fine. It's totally fine. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I teach a, a, a donation based dance cardio class on, uh, Saturdays that benefits save the children and the equal justice initiative and half the class is videos off and half the class is videos on, which is totally fine. And, um, so that's the one class. Then we do cardio tone. I love cardio tone. It's made me a really fast runner. You warm up, you learn a dance and do it just one dance. And then you do a whole song of plyometrics. Mm. It's kind of like a plyometrics dance. It's a series and then you repeat it like three or four times. And then you do upper body work with, um, I usually like to do um, unilateral or single leg uh, type work and you pick two muscles. I'll do shoulders and triceps and um, call it a day. And then you do a hit series, uh, four different moves, 20 reps, three rounds. I'm your timer. I do all of them. You do as many as you can in the amount of time I can do them. And with a little rest between each time, each round, and that's your hit series. And then we go down to the mat and do uh, one side of legs, planks, other side of legs, um, prone back work, flip over, abs, and stretch. Oof. And that's cardio tone. Nice. It's a true full body. It's like literally get you get everything you know you like to dance if you like to do plyometrics if you like to do hit 
if you like to tone with free weights, if you like to do lower body planks and true core work, which is back work and front work. Um, so that's cardio tone. And then we just introduced this trampoline class, which is really fun. Uh, and you start out, you warm up, you do about 20, 25, depending on the trainer, what they want to do, 20 to 25 minutes of straight cardio on the tramp. Then you do stability work. And then you do uh, free weight work with your upper body into uh, body weight work, into leg work. And then you do plyometrics on the tramp and then hit series on the tramp, wow. which is similar to the cardio tone <laughs> with the reps. Yeah, totally, totally. No, but there's something Abs too. There's something like um, there's some kind of scientific. I don't know. I'm sure you know. That, but there's like bounding and doing things like that. that it does something to you on a cellular level. I don't. Know, I know I read it once, but I don't know if you know the science behind it. You can just kind of share. Yeah, I, absolutely. Um, it's. I mean, it's great. It releases a lot of. Um, you know, like it, it just releases a lot in your body. Just to make it simple. And uh, it's great for your joints. And it also, um, the impact uh, is just good for your joints and the stability work. Uh, so a lot of people with um, injuries or feel like they can't get cardio with uh, joint issues and stuff like that, it's great for them. But yeah, overall, like scientifically, it just releases a lot um, within your body chemically that uh, benefits you. In and general, it's, and it's like a safer option for the people who obviously the explosive plyo might be a little too aggressive for them, so they can kind of totally, yeah, yeah. And in the plyo and the cardio tone, there's always a non low impact option that we yeah. give as well. Uh, so, you know, there's no excuse. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you kind of, uh, well, actually, before that, do you so do you give a list of hey, you should have a band, a couple of weights, you know, is it something you, you, is a disclaimer like on this site or you just say what you, what you can use or you can use body weight, I'm sure. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's on the site. Like when you sign up for a class, it'll tell you what you need, but because it's a virtual company, I made it. So you need hardly any props in awesome. class. Um, you can do it with cans of soup and that's it. You know, like just because I knew everyone was going to be at home. No, but I mean, Amazon the, trying to get free weights during this time was like, so I know. lucrative i know firsthand I, like, oh. I know yeah yeah so you know you can literally do a whole class with a can of weights or if you don't have anything it's fine wine bottles anything i'll bring know. i could bring wine bottles that's it <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. I, everyone's I, I, got wine <laughs> especially especially during the pandemic i think everyone is uh yes. fully stocked up on the wine i think i'd maybe bring yes. milk, milk jugs so i could do the, the, yeah. Bro, the oh yeah the totally. bro the bro totally. <laughs> Um, and you we're talking about uh, the charity component as well. And I know that you started out the company as donation based. And, mm -hmm. and I, I've seen that you've done all of these, you do these little challenges where however many calories you burn, you'll donate yeah. certain amounts. I think that's such an amazing um, aspect. And I, I think a lot of entrepreneurs and businesses should learn from that and the giving back. I'm a huge proponent of mentoring and giving back. So walk yeah. me through the process of, of the, your charity. Yeah. So, and, 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 you know, like going on with that, like with entrepreneurs that it, it's scary to start a business and give back at the same time. You know, I think in business it's like, okay, I got to make money somehow, you know, like how, you know, but I think for me, I wanted to start a company that gave back right away. I just think that that's just, you know, in general, just being good people, I don't know, you know, just to give back in general, if you're going to start something and you have the authority to create something, you know, make it right when you, in the beginning. And especially this, the, the, the limit really began during um, the Black Lives Matter movement. And I knew I wanted to give back um, to the Black Lives Matter movement as well. Um, I have two charities. Um, I've given to different charities in the Black Lives Movement, but currently it's the Equal Justice Initiative. I really like what they're doing and they're very educational um, about their work. And uh, and then also the other charity is Save the Children. Jennifer Garner is a very good friend of mine and she introduced me um, to that organization. And she is just lovely and I love what, I mean, it's children. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like it's the, it's the future and, and, and every child is not 
born into an area that, you know, you don't choose where you're born or what you're given and the access you have to anything. And so an organization that helps that and just helps children have a, you know, a better step forward in life and just feel taken care of, um, hands down, so important. So both um, Save the Children and the Equal Justice Initiative, uh, the Saturday class, I've kept it donation the entire um, the entire pandemic. And uh, yeah, and and we've raised almost $60,000. Wow, I was was, was going to ask you, that's incredible. Yeah, Yeah, no, it's it's really great. It's super awesome. And um, and 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 also, you know, running a business and choosing charities, you you also help make people aware of these charities as well um, on a weekly basis. So I think that's important. And um, so those organizations are great. I ran the virtual New York City Marathon for Save the Children as well. And um, then on Sundays, uh, so I trained Sutton Foster. She's a Broadway um, Broadway queen, oh, yeah. well-known gal. And, um, and uh, she uh, mentioned we decided to open up her private session on Sundays oh, wow. to Instagram, Instagram Live on her Instagram and every uh and it's every sunday at 10 a.m eastern both classes saturday at 10 a.m eastern and sunday at 10 a.m eastern and sutton gives uh every calorie she burns she gives a dollar to um the actors fund which is both of us is obviously like something that's very near and dear and important to us as well so um being you know on broadway and just dancers and actors and performers who are out of work completely a lot, you know, yeah. everyone. And so, um, so yeah, I'm always trying to burn those calories in her session, but, um, yeah, so, uh, that's that, uh, charitable aspect, um, as well. I mean, it's me in a limit, but also hugely set and foster, um, just her in general. So, um, so yeah, those, that's the charitable aspect of the limit. It is amazing. I think it, it, you really do realize, um, cause it's, of course, like you said, when you're in a business or you're starting a business, you have that close to the vest mentality and you're like, Oh, every dollar has to be accounted for. But the fact that you can right. give it away and then you don't even, you probably didn't even, obviously it feels good to give things away, but you probably didn't even realize how good that would feel and how much that would actually come back to you. Yeah, no, uh, 100%. I mean, uh, it, it's just the, especially a community you're building, um, you know, any kind of workout is a community, you know, like anyone who's been to any workout space, it's a community. You see the same people, you like to work out with the group, you like the trainer you take from and, and it becomes, you know, your routine. And, and um, when you're a community that knows that it's doing good for, you know, these organizations, that priceless as well you know what i mean it just it just enhances the the joy and um the positivity of that community and everybody feels everyone feels like they're doing something you know um i think that especially during this time it's hard to like be like what can i do you know what can i do for the black lives matter movement what can i do for children who are struggling and really affected by covid and just in general. And, and even if you don't have anything to donate, just showing up and dancing for those charities is enough, Putting you this, know, the good energy out into the universe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, for sure. Awesome. So when do you think Broadway is going to come back? I mean, obviously I, uh, I know, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I mean, luckily the COVID vaccine is starting. Um, I feel like a theater full of people, it's going to be, and dancers dancing with each other and sweating and, you know, and singing and all together on stage. Um, I think it's, I hope, you know, if the vaccine works, um, I just hope that there's like hopefully a plan soon for the safest possible option to get it back sooner than later. Um, You know, whether that's, you know, six feet apart seats or whatnot, but um, hopefully sooner than later. <laughs> yeah. What's, uh, what's something, what's the main thing that you learned about yourself during COVID? The main thing I learned about myself. Um, 
Uh, actually, the main, I, I learned a lot about my limit. <laughs> Uh, I, I did as, as a business owner and a trainer, I learned what my limit is, um, of how much I can physically do and how much I can mentally do all at once and w reaching that limit sometimes of, you know, like needing a day off, but any entrepreneur knows you don't really have a day off. <laughs> What's a day any off? Any parent, yeah. Yeah. any parent knows you don't have a day off, you know, but, um, but uh, and, and navigating that, um, I think it, it I mean, it's exactly the limit, the workout, navigating that and figuring out how to get stronger from it, getting stronger from it and just like then attacking different challenges that still come uh, being an entrepreneur, preneur, being so physically active all day long, um, mentally and physically and um I think I learned that big time um, and I'm stronger for it. Like, I think I've learned how strong I am, what I can handle uh, in the entrepreneur world. I love that. What's your most treasured possession? My most treasured possession? My husband? I mean, I don't know if you consider that a possession. <laughs> But I, Depends I what kind of relationship you have. I don't know. I know You're like, like go, yeah, sit down. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, yeah, go sit down. You're yeah, possessive. I mean, yeah, but I mean, like the first—that's the first thing that came to me. But that's I good. Guess it's weird for a possession, but um, but yeah, we've learned about. I mean, we've learned about each other a lot too during this pandemic, oh, and sure. I think. I think he didn't realize as a professional dancer as well. It's like I didn't think he realized what I actually do physically <laughs> until the pandemic, until he's like, literally it's in his face all the time. He's like, Oh my gosh. So that like respect, you mm. know, for each other. That's, um, I'm glad it went that way because you know, it could have gone the other way as well. <laughs> during I think, the I, pandemic. I think that happened to a lot of people. Um, who are yeah. your, who are your heroes? My heroes for sure. My mom is, uh, probably my biggest hero. Um, I mean, I can do this because of her, of a mom that had like three jobs and raised three kids. Hands down, I feel like what I do is easy compared to that. Um, but uh, so my mom and really my mom, <laughs> really just my mom. I mean, no, I like lots of people, but like on a level of a hero, I think, really just my mom was she a dance mom was she like all in all involved in all of it she was but not too much you know what i mean like yeah. she obviously she got me everywhere and everything but she wasn't there helping me put my costumes on or anything you know she with like all the other moms like she didn't get me ready i got myself ready yeah. um so just just enough I love that. Yeah. It, for me too, I started working, I got signed when I was 17. So I, there was no other option besides dancing for me. Was that something uh -huh. that was there, were you like, I'm not going to college. I'm not going, this is, this is all that I'm focused on doing. Was that your mindset as well? I mean, it, it was my mindset when I got the, the national tour of the 40 sec, of 42nd street. Um, I think I just didn't think it would ever be a reality. I don't know, but because I was given that opportunity, probably like you, you know, you're signed at 17, you were given like the opportunity. Um, but I was, I was foolishly, foolishly optimistic though. I was like, I, I had no doubt in my, I don't know that maybe this is like the power of, you know, the mind. I never yeah. for a second didn't think I was going to be a professional dancer. No matter, everyone was telling me I was crazy. Oh I, you yeah. know, you'll be back. You're moving to LA. Oh, you're going to be back in, you know, six months. And I was just like, there was nothing. And I think that obviously that, that work ethic and that drive comes from growing up as a dancer, but I didn't know if mm -hmm. I was the only one who was just, maybe I was just dumb enough to, 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 to go for it. No, no, you weren't dumb. No, you weren't. No, not at all. I think that like, I think I'm, I'm similar to you in the respect that like, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew I, I want to dance, you know, like, but I think I was like, what, how does, how do I do that? You know what I mean? Like, like, how do I do that? But I think, cause even now I like, no, I want to dance, you know, and perform and everything and, and teach. And I love to teach. And, um, 
but yeah, I think you, you had more of a, like a definite direction than I did um, at 17, but yeah. it's our, I mean, you know, if you love to dance, that love and that passion and that soul is always in you. You know what I mean? Like, it's just always there, whether you can do it or not, or do it or whether you do it or not, you just watch, you know what I mean? That just appreciation even is just, or like you did, you, it's in the, you, the, that performative, you know? that performative nature, it pivots to something else, right? You, you go, okay, well, I can't dance on stage. Absolutely. I'm going to create my own stage or like for me, I, I love performing. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to mm -hmm. start a podcast. I'm, I do TV cooking as a chef because yeah. I became a chef, which is another crazy, thank God yeah. I had the dance background. That's amazing. That, that set me up for uh, grinding it out in the kitchen for sure. But I think there is that, Ooh, that yeah. you're always going to have that drive in you and it's going to get out somewhere. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's like, that's the professional dancer drive. That's like, like, yeah, like you, uh, professionals. That's amazing. I'm sure you like, what's your favorite thing to cook? Do you yeah. get that question a lot? I get that question a lot. And I, I feel like I always tailor always. it to like whoever I'm, I like to cook for people. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm a big, like, I, I think my favorite thing to cook would be like braised short ribs because it's such a like satisfying oh. Or like something it's Thai, so good, like yeah. I love a Thai curry or something. Like I love the Asian uh -huh. flavor, like fresh flavors. So, but I usually will ask whomever is coming over, "Hey, what do you like to cook?" And then I like to make it special for them because it's like having it's it's that performative nature again, where I, I like yeah. I, I do it, and then to see the reaction, it's like getting that applause. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, for sure, absolutely, and like and for you, it 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 probably helps you in this time as well. Just um that drive i mean i feel it it's hard to get the energy up and perform and teach in a room by myself to zoom yeah. boxes even though i see people you know going that performer part of you is there you know is there to just work hard and you know like even if it's a show where no one showed up you're still 150 <laughs> percent it's like rehearsal you, know? you gotta do it full um, out you gotta go full so, out yeah. <laughs> <laughs> full out full out full no matter out. what yeah that should be the next uh have but a that drive. that's the drive you need to have a yeah. class called full out and just gonna be balls to the wall cardio there'll be no <laughs> videos on for this class. <laughs> no videos on for this class just me going crazy full out <laughs> oh, i love it so um beth where can we find uh all the information about the limit the limitfit.com amazing this and that's the name limitfit.com. Yeah. And we also have Instagram at the limit fit too, but to sign up for class and, and on demand, the limitfit.com. And your Instagram? My Instagram is Beth J nicely. Amazing. Um, yeah. So I could literally talk to you all day. Obviously we have very, very similar backgrounds, I know. Um, but I know we're, we, I'm sure you have to rush off to another class. Uh, hopefully everyone will have their video on. Uh, Beth, thank, thank you so much. I know for uh, taking the time and being so generous. Uh, I of will course. definitely Thank talk, to, talk to you for again. for having me. Oh, thanks. It was awesome. So uh, have Yay. a wonderful, wonderful day. And uh, maybe I'll see you in class. <laughs> yes, please come to class. I think you'll like it. Especially Sounds... being a dancer. Or you just, you can just sit there with your video off and just really cheers me. That's fine. <laughs> it's water, I yeah. swear. It's water, I swear. <laughs> It's water. It's just water. I'm hydrating. I'm so <laughs> hydrating. All right, Beth. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Thank you. Have a good day.